Hi, I'm Mark Fisher, and I am wearing a cape. And I'm Michael Keeler. I'm also wearing a cape. When I was growing up, my friends liked sports and cars and playing in the dirt. And I liked playing pretend. When I was growing up, my friends also really liked sports. And I always just wanted to watch or be the referee or the cheerleader. You can see where this is going. <laughs> my biggest struggle when I was a kid was a constant and pervading sense of being alone and not really fitting in with the world around me. But then, in seventh grade, I played the dentist in Little Shop of Horrors, and I discovered <laughs> musical theater. That's right, yes. I promptly ran out to the library, and I got all the cast recordings I could, and I fell in love with shows like Jesus Christ Superstar, and Tommy, and, and Carousel, and now I was really alone. My biggest struggle as a kid was an ever-present feeling that I didn't belong. Uh, right around fifth grade, I started taking dance class and singing lessons. And like Mark, my new artistic hobbies only really heightened that feeling that I was a little different. Uh, I have countless memories of being tormented by my peers for being a little girly or a little gay. One day, I even proudly wore my dance studio jacket to school. It said, Dance by Verna on the back, um, only to be teased for it the entire day. Hmm. Things, uh... Things started to change for me when I got to high school, and I was cast in the musical as a 14-year-old Wizard of Oz, and I joined the local community theater group, the Our Gang Players, and it was here that I discovered that theater has the power to create community, and I came to realize it was precisely this feeling of community that I was so unknowingly desperate for. Things started to change for me around middle school as well. Uh, I too discovered a community theater group called the Our Gang Players. This little theater group was a community formed by hugs and a genuine sense of play. We were expected to show each other unwavering kindness and treat each other as we'd want to be treated. I knew that this theater community was special because I, I had finally found kindred spirits who, who liked playing pretend and making magic, and most importantly, I was finally not alone. I mean, these were people who knew what Pippin was. I knew this theater community was special because I was immediately validated by my peers for my dance skills and my creativity, right? I was a teenage boy doing musical theater who could dance. I was worth my weight in gold, right? <laughs> So over the six years I spent doing community theater, my friends and I took risks we would have never taken in a typical high school setting. We weren't afraid to fail. We weren't afraid to look silly. In fact, we knew our theater friends would only respect us more for it. So after school and on weekends, we gave 110% of ourselves. It was audacious and freeing and fun. After graduation, Michael and I went our separate ways, earning undergraduate degrees in theater and dance. Flash forward 10 years later, and we joined forces once again, this time to start a business. So two and a half years ago, we had no space, one employee, me, and a big dream. We now have our own dedicated physical facility in Midtown Manhattan, over 40 full and part-time team members, and literally as much business as we have the capacity to handle. But the best part is, we did it all based on the values we learned as awkward teens doing Godspell in South Jersey. Starting a business for us was really a continuation of the questions we had been asking ourselves since seventh grade. Really, the key question for us starting our business became this. How do we create a community, a culture, and a brand that inspires people to be the best possible versions of themselves? This is the question worthy of our lifelong pursuit and passion. When we think back to those community theater years, the thing that stands out most, aside from the hilarious performances and questionable choreographic choices, were <laughs> were all the values you heard in that story. A sense of real community and belonging. A genuine appreciation in the value of fun and hugs and play. A religious-like belief that magic can extend beyond the proscenium. A practice of celebrating everyone for his or her unique gifts and talents. And a confidence in our ability to take risks and boldly embrace failure. That's what theater meant to us growing up, and really that's still what theater means to us today. Those values became the foundation of our business, and really the foundation of our lives. Our next challenge was to translate all that value stuff into an actual business. We basically took a traditional business agenda and turned it on its head, replacing all the typical business drivers with our values. It looked a little something like this. Instead of make money, we vowed to make magic. Instead of create jobs, our plan was to inspire greatness. And lastly, instead of flying customers, our goal was to build community. 
The strategy was really simple. We turned a, a money-making agenda into a values-based agenda, truly believing that if we were able to make magic, inspire greatness, and build community, the money would just come. And the money totally came. <laughs> but more importantly, we had an authentic message worth sharing. I mean, we were bringing magic and inspiration and inclusiveness to a place in people's lives where it was currently lacking. Our tagline was born. We were ridiculous humans, serious fitness. We had accidentally started a gym. <laughs> so some of you might be thinking at this point, cool, all this value stuff is great, the touchy-feely stuff is great, but how do my personal values actually impact my business, right? And so I know I had the same kind of skepticism when we first started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna demonstrate for you this values-based business plan in action. We'll prove to you that our business is walking this talk and it's working. We're gonna to toss out some rapid fire examples of business practices that were born out of our community theater values. We hope that in these examples, you'll see some ideas that could transform your business, your life, and maybe even the future of Broadway. Let's start with our first uh, agenda item, which was make magic. For starters, we don't call our customers clients. We call them ninjas. We can all agree it's much more fun to be a ninja than it is to be a customer or a client. Um, secondly, we don't call our gym a gym. Right? We call it the Enchanted Ninja Clubhouse of Glory and Dreams. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Our brand mascot is the unicorn. <laughs> and they're everywhere. They're in our merchandise, they're in our YouTube videos. They all have names, they are sexually perverse, and they are completely unsafe for work. And the environment itself is magical. Uh, as you can see in the picture up there with me teaching class with no pants on, we gave the clubhouse really cool lights because we want to feel special and have a sense of drama, like, like a really friendly club where everyone is really, 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 really friendly. Our staff all have ridiculous business cards and really kind of insane titles. For example, Mark's official business title is Ninja Master. I'm the business wizard. Other folks on our team who you hopefully meet during one of the breaks are the Minister of Belief, the, the Duchess of Nutrition. One is the Beast. Uh, we even have a costume closet at our facility to help make magic on a regular basis. I mean, how much more fun would you have at your gym if your trainer dressed like that? <laughs> Incidentally, most people assume I'm a homosexual. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of members of our team and in the Ninja Army that are drag queens in their spare time. So we've actually produced drag shows at the clubhouse. And we even have them host events for us. And last but not least, for our last bit of magic, we actually need everyone to stand up in their seats. So everyone, wherever you are, you can stand up right now. So one of our favorite ways of creating magic during even the most boring and mundane business meeting is to have a spontaneous dance party for no reason at all. <laughs> so we'd like to invite you guys to join us in a 15 second dance party starting now. Very good work, everyone. That was, that was a very sexy and awkward that dance party. That really you nailed that. You nailed that. that. Awesome. So the next item on our agenda was replace create jobs with inspire greatness. So we know that highly functioning teams are driven daily by shared vision and passion. So we don't ever focus on getting more ninjas. We focus on inspiring the MFF team to greatness. So here are some examples. We believe in getting 1% better every day. Everyone on our team has their own continuing education budget to spend on whatever will further their development. Books, workshops, condoms. <laughs> you know what I mean. From our start, we've always hired for passion and trained for skill. In fact, most of our team are made up by people who are performers who never worked in the fitness industry before. Hell, that guy up there on the left, we hired after a night of drinking out at a strip club. It's true. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. That actually um, happened. <laughs> uh, a statistic for you. In 2013, we estimate that on average, each of our team members spent 10 hours per week on personal development. 10 hours. That's a whole extra work day every week dedicated to constantly raising the bar. So let's be clear about one thing. We are batshit crazy, right? We are ridiculous humans, but we take our work very seriously. We really pride ourselves on combining our zany culture and approach with consistent, measurable, and dramatic fitness results. We're also obsessed with feedback. 
We have a feedback box for the ninjas. We have a virtual anonymous feedback box for the team. And we require monthly peer feedback sessions to improve customer service. So that picture of those gentlemen up there, that's, that's what they're doing. They're giving feedback. That's why they're dressed professionally. <laughs> we also offer life coaching training during our weekly team meetings to improve customer service. And lastly, we genuinely look to align our company goals with the individual goals of our team members. Yeah, we aim to create a team of really audacious dreamers and empower them to embrace our company's mission and vision in a way that's truly authentic to them. In fact, if it wasn't for our insane team, we really wouldn't be standing here today. Um, the last item on our agenda is create community. Uh, we've learned that you can forget all about traditional marketing when you create a genuine community that people want to belong to. We spent basically zero dollars on traditional marketing so far. Instead, we rely on our ninja's belief in what we are doing and empower them to talk about us every single chance they get, often until their friends and family tell them to shut the hell up about that unicorn cult. <laughs> so, we find that in order to create a real sense of family, we have to start internally. So we think of the team as the nucleus of the community. So for instance, we recently did a retreat where we did a lot of bonding. We made these really cool superhero capes. I just spot it because I was a dancer. Don't be overly impressed. Um, and we drank far, far too many adult beverages in a hot tub. Um, we are also obsessed with the ninjas. So we strive to know the name, backgrounds, and goals of literally everyone who comes in the clubhouse. And we start each class and training session by playing a name game with the ninjas. So we'll ask questions like, where are you from originally? Or, or what did you do this week that you're most proud of? Or, or who is the first celebrity you masturbated to? It's true. So, Seriously. <laughs> being a community also means getting personal sometimes. So we actually listen to what's going on in the personal lives of our ninjas, right? And we write them handwritten cards to celebrate them or support them. Maybe the most flamboyant expression of our community are our parties. Most recently, we celebrated the holidays right here at New World Sages with close to 500 people just partying their asses off. Uh, and for people in the community who are not the party animals, we have an amazing cook book, uh, book club and cooking club, um, both started by ninjas who wanted to contribute to their community. We are a tribe with our own unique language and symbolism. Uh, we say a lot of very weird and specific and, and profanity-laden things that somehow make sense to each other. And we also believe, as a community, we need to reach outside of ourselves. So in our brief history, our team and ninjas have raised over $100,000 for various charitable causes, including Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS, Hurricane Sandy Relief, and revitalizing a park next door to our clubhouse in Hell's Kitchen. So what's, what's the takeaway about this? Are we, just, you, we want you to know that we're a bunch of warm, fuzzy do-gooders. Uh, no, not really. Hopefully you're hearing that we've been talking about our fitness business for the last 10-ish minutes, and we haven't really talked about fitness at all. Um, that either means that we're just terrible business people and we should give up right now, um, or maybe it means that our business is a success because it's an authentic reflection of our values and beliefs. Uh, maybe it means for you that you and your business have more to offer the world than those services listed on your website. So this leads us to the topic of impact. You might be asking yourself, you know, has this approach actually worked? Yes. Yes, it has. And in fact, after starting with no outside investment, we netted multiple seven-figure revenues in just our second year in business. So leading with our values has led to undeniable bottom line success. But let's talk about the real impact of this approach. Here are some words from our ninjas and our team. I learned to look at myself in the mirror and love him. My heart is full, and I desperately crave this misfit community of wonderment. I work with a team, no, a family, that celebrates me, supports me, and pushes me to get better each day, and I want to. The love, support, and silliness allowed me to come out of my exhausted, aching shell and be true to the creative, youthful spirit that I am. So some closing questions for all of you. How happy are you? Really, right? Like how happy are you? How happy are your coworkers and your clients and your patrons and your customers? How much fun are you having every day when you go to work? How much fun are you having and your clients having, your customers having? Um, if your answer to all that is, yes, we are so happy every day. Um, our patrons are happy. Our clients are happy. Awesome. Good for you. Keep it up. If fun and happiness currently have no place in your work life, we'd like you to consider the possibilities. So we'd like to ask everyone to close their eyes for a moment. We can see so, you. We can see you. Close we can see eyes. you. I know. It's theater. 
That's why you shouldn't leave during the curtain call. The actors can see you. You should stay to the end. <laughs> so ask yourself these questions. How would your life change if your work environment was the happiest place you know? If your job mandate was that you and your team have as much fun as possible while making sure your customers are having fun? What if you went to work every day in a place where you can help your business thrive by being your weirdest and most authentic self? What if your to-do list had only one item on it? Make magic. Magic to do. Okay, open your eyes. So here's the deal. We know that we are ridiculous humans. And we know that the way we've applied our values to our business might not work for a lot of you, at least now without possibly losing your job and in some states possibly facing legal consequences. <laughs> but we hope by considering these questions, you'll create some new possibilities for a better business, a better Broadway, and a better life. Thank you so, so much. Yeah.